Hi, my name is Corey Goss, and in this video I'll be walking you through an introduction to post-process class and transaction-based debug using our SimVision debug solution. Here's what we'll be looking at specifically within this video. I'm now going to switch over to our demo that we've been using on all of the other demo videos in this series. So the first thing I want to introduce to you is the variety of probe commands that are used within this simulation to actually capture the information we'll be analyzing. The first thing I'm doing is creating a database using the database open command. Next what we do is we probe all of the RTL signals out to the waveform database. Now I want to make note here to be careful when doing this. If you have a very large design, you probably don't want to be dumping all signals at all levels because you will end up with a very large database. Notice the probe assertions command here is a little more selective. What we're doing is we're capturing assertions on the receiver as well as the transmitter interface and we have the dash transaction option to save assertions as transactions. We're also probing some arrays within the design. We use the dash memories option for that. And the last thing I'm doing down here is probing the entire UVM um, structure out to the waveform database. Now again, we might want to be careful here. I have a small environment. That's why I'm doing all levels, all depths. However, you, you might want to be a little more selective and probe only the uh, objects of interest. Now once I've created these probes, and this is a script here, so it's automated, uh, I'm running to the end of the connect phase, and then I'm enabling transaction recording for all sequences. So that we'll be capturing transactions on each of the stimulus that we're, we're sending in to the design. Now, just to set some context for this debug uh, demo, uh, what we have in our simulation is we have an assertion that's failing. So here is our failure. The failure tells us that there is an assertion inside the receiver called input RF pop that's failed. Now initially, I, being the verification engineer, handed this off to the RTL designer and said, I think there's a problem inside the RTL. However, the RTL designer has debugged it back out to the interface and that they've come back and told us that uh, we are for some reason incorrectly driving the APB interface at the time that this assertion has failed. The assertion is fine, RTL is fine, we, need, we now need to debug this on the test bench side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch SimVision in post-process mode using the waveform database we've collected and I'm going to do some analysis. And the first thing I probably want to do is bring in that assertion and take a look at it. Um, so I don't need to load in the snapshot in order to do that, but in order to access all connectivity information for um, uh, source tracing and driver tracing and so forth, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the snapshot. So I right click here and I say explore full design. That's one way of loading the snapshot. I could have also just sent a file out to the source browser and that would have done it too. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to navigate down into my receiver and I'm going to take a look at my assertions and my transactions that I've collected in my simulation. I'm going to filter away all ports and internal registers. And remember, the name of our assertion was input RF pop. And um, so I'm filtering away on that. And notice that I have an assertion as well as a transaction. So I'm going to just say Control A to highlight everything and Control W in the 12.2 release to send this out to the waveform. Now, the top is the assertion probed as a transaction. The bottom is just a general assertion probe. So I'm going to zoom full and zoom in on the error scenario. And you'll see here that we have the failure being flagged via the assertion. And I can get information on checked, finished, failed, and disabled counts. And I also have the transaction being shown, uh, sorry, the assertion being shown as a transaction. Notice that the view is slightly different. For transactions, if it's an instantaneous assertion, it shows up as a spike. If it was a multi-cycle assertion, we would see a band across here that would show us uh, a color, green or red, indicating pass or fail. Now, <clears throat> I can also, for this assertion, add contributing signals. So this shows me all of the signals that go into the creation of this assertion. So maybe from this information, I might be able to get enough detail to do some debug. More likely though, I'll need some more information. So I'm going to now take a look at what's occurring on that interface at the time of failure. So I'll just go back over to my design browser. And remember, the issue was on the APB interface. 
So I'm going to remove my filters and I'm going to just say show me all the signals and from here I'm going to grab all the signals and I'm going to make sure that I have them my cursor set properly and I'm going to say control W and this will send them all out to the waveform. So now I'm looking at a higher level of information I'm looking at the actual driving interface around the time that the failure occurred and I see here that I've got an X being returned back on the read data. So this might be enough to get me a little bit farther in debug. Perhaps I'm reading from an incorrect address. I'm not sure. Um, I can see my address is set to zero, and there was a read that happened just previously, so I'm not sure why this read has actually caused the fail. So again, I may need to raise the level of abstraction and find out more information about what's happening in my environment. And for this, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to bring in transactions coming from the UVM environment. So we're driving on the APB interface. So anytime I've recorded transaction information for UVM, we see a UVM test top hierarchical, hierarchical element. If I expand that down, I can now grab all of my APB transactions that are occurring. And if I go down into the sequencer, I can see that my virtual sequence is being, um, is, uh, is being driven. So I'm going to bring that out. And let's just zoom out a tiny bit here. And now you can see that at the time of driving, I was actually doing this U2A bad parity virtual sequence. And you see the overlap that's occurring here? This overlap means that these low level requests are actually part of a higher level sequence. And if I expand that out, I can actually see what was going on. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit further here, closer to the error point, and you'll see that this readback generated an X value. The read was actually targeting address 0, and it was part of a higher level sequence. This rec is actually the same rec that we're looking at up here, and it is part of the RDRX FIFO field that exists within the U2A bad parity virtual sequence. So right now, I understand that I have a lower level UVM object, and that object, sorry, the rec, the read request, is being sent as part of this sequence. So I might want to look at why is this sequence actually being sent, or perhaps this is too many requests along the way. Or perhaps this is a valid request, but we're in the wrong configuration. Transactions are great for showing you stimulus, however, you may want to see more information in the waveform window, such as configuration objects. So let's take a look now at how we can do a little bit more debug on our UVM environment. So the same way that we can navigate RTL and sequences, we can also navigate our UVM environment. So here I'm just going to click on the UVM package and notice in the design browser we have our UVM top level. I can expand this down into my environment and you can see here's my test bench. I can expand this even further, and I can see here's my APB interface. Here's my collector, monitor, standard UVM structure. I'm going to go into my master, and my master is the one that's doing the driving. So now I'm going to add this driver out to the waveform window, and I do this the same way that I do any other signal. I say Control w and now I have an orange stripe. Now this stripe gives us the fully qualified name of the object that we're looking at. So the APB master driver, here's my class handle, and if I hover over, it'll give me more information about that particular object. But now that's not really that interesting to me. What I'm really looking at is the fields that exist within the driver at the time of driving this request. So I can look down into my driver and I can see that, ah, here's my configuration. I see I have number of slaves set to one. My master config is currently active. Uh, I can probe down into my slave configuration objects and I can expand that out. So perhaps this is giving me extra information as to why I'm generating this particular stimulus right now. And I'm doing it in the exact same way that I can navigate my RTL environment. Right? If I want to look at the requests, I can see that here's all my requests. This is my dynamic data that I'm sending on this interface. And notice that this aligns with the transactions that I was sending before. So here's my APB read. Right? Here's the data that I'm collecting back. This is in decimal, but I can easily convert this over to hexadecimal. This is receiving BC. Here's my transaction. It's receiving BC. 
right? So I can see all of the information that I need in the class-based environment, my transactions, my assertions, my driving interface signals, all within one win window within SimVision. And I can easily navigate between all of them to get a much better idea of exactly what's going on within my entire environment all at once. So I hope you found this uh, debug video useful. Do check out other videos within the series.